This year, Ashlyn and I have obviously been so busy, if you haven't noticed, and we've, we've got married, we had tons of family in town, we've been working on a rental like crazy, which has been occupying most of my time, which is, you know, for the most part, why we haven't been making a ton of videos. You know, the other thing, we're about to go on vacation, well, we're about to go on our honeymoon for two weeks to Costa Rica here in, in the next week, which is going to be a ton of fun. And we may very well be gone when you actually see this video. But despite all of that, we've been doing our best to still grow a garden, still raise all of our animals, and, and you know handle the homestead as if we didn't have a ton of things going on because it's so easy to put the homestead on the back burner when you're incredibly busy like that. And we've actually done a pretty good job of canning and you know still butchering and raising chickens and doing all the things that we wanted to do and for our second year homesteading we've done a pretty good job of putting so much away in our you know in our pantry we don't have a root cellar we don't really have a canning storage we just kind of toss everything where we can but i figured in this video i'd kind of show you what we've been able to put away this year and uh that being meat and you know canned goods but also, you know, giving you an update on the homestead and where everybody's at and what we've got going on, what our fruit trees are looking like, things like that. So let's go inside and let's take a look. Let's see what we've been able to can this year and what we've been able to put away in our freezers. And uh, we'll start there. Like I was saying, we don't have a root cellar. We don't have a bunch of canning storage. And so we just have this little pantry. And, you know, as Ashlyn and I's family grows, this is not going to be big enough so we're going to have to probably build a bigger pantry or you know build a root cellar things like that so we can have an actual storage for all of this stuff but we've done a pretty decent job of putting things away and for the most part the garden's actually all done because everything's grown for the most part so so you can see we've got a lot of corn that we've been able to preserve and we did some frozen corn but we did a lot of canned corn we've got even more down in here which is awesome. We uh, canned a bunch of pasta sauces, like tomato sauce. This is really just like a basic tomato sauce with basil in there, which is basil from our garden. And then we've got some pretty decently spicy salsa that we canned, which our family has just absolutely gone crazy over. We got some onions this year. They did okay. And these are the ones that are actually good to preserve. They're still solid. They're not rotting, which is awesome. We were able to preserve a ton of our green beans, which we really, really love. And like, we have so many in here. We got a full year's worth of green beans. I think we got a full year's worth of corn. We were able to preserve things like banana peppers, like a pickled banana pepper, which is awesome. And then we got our pickles, which we really love. We did some spears, which are already ate for the most part because the family loves them. But we also did, you know, like little chips for uh, sandwiches and burgers and things like that. Earlier in the year, we were able to preserve some uh, chicken stock, which is awesome. And we had a lot of chicken, you know, parts that we, you know, weren't going to eat. And so we decided to render those down and make chicken stock. Something earlier in the year that we did was we actually rendered some lard. And we have a different video for that, but uh, I figured I'd mention it. That's something else we were able to preserve this year. And obviously we are getting eggs like crazy from our chickens this time of year. So we have those all stocked up. I might actually put some of those eggs in some pickling lime. I've heard that's a pretty good way of preserving them. The other day, Ashlyn and I finally got all of our dried beans off of the stalks and we've got some black beans, we've got some pinto beans. And then over here on top of our freezer, we've got a bunch of red beans. These are our freezers. We have, we really like these stand up freezers. And then we have a chest freezer, which has a bunch of last year's chicken, which is gonna be uh, taken over by this year's chicken when we actually butcher it. But in here, we've put away quite a bit of tomatoes, uh, just some that I wasn't able to get to right away so we can freeze them. And the nice thing is when you unthaw these, the skins come right off. Uh, we've, we've frozen quite a bit of corn on the cob because we really like that. So for that, you just blanch it for a few minutes and then you, you put it in the freezer to freeze and then you can package it. and. We got a decent amount of that in here and even some that we've taken off the cob and frozen. We also came in and 
froze a lot of peppers. So this is our green peppers. These are things like we can use in fajitas and uh, you know, chop them up into little pieces. We also uh, got all of our broccoli, which is what we did at the beginning of the year. That was much earlier in the year we were able to preserve broccoli and uh, we also have some cauliflower in the other freezer. And that's for the most part all the veggies, but we also have a bunch of meats in these freezers. So we have like our lard from our last pig that we butchered and these are the, the organs. But we've got some bacon that we've done. This bacon is absolutely delicious. Uh, we've got some pork shoulders, some pork roasts, some country ribs some uh, ham hock and things like that. And then in here, we've got all of our chops, all of our pork chops, which we haven't actually gotten a chance to try these yet, but we are going to be trying some this week. So they should be delicious. And of course in here, we've got all of our sausage from our pork. We sent this, this pig to the butcher. And so that's why it's all packaged like this because we just, we didn't have the time with the wedding. And so we just had somebody else do it for us. And then in this big freezer, we still have some more pork, but we have a lot of other stuff. So we have all of our beef that we harvested from earlier in the year. This was our, uh, our steer oak who we butchered. And we've already gone through a lot of ground beef, but we still have a bunch of stuff to go through. So we have a bunch of briskets and, uh, you know, T-bone steaks to eat. And we even have some of the bacon that we harvested from our pig uh, earlier, earlier in the year. And up in here, we have even more steaks and T-bone and sirloin and all that good stuff. This is turkeys that we did last year, so I won't count that in this video, but even more sausage from this year's pigs. We have pretty much two full freezers and you know a third freezer of chicken that we were able to able to preserve or set away in the freezers this year we have one more thing that we were able to preserve which is all of our potatoes which did so much better this year than last year and you can see this is our second bedroom and we just have them stored in our closet over here like i said we do not have uh root cellar but this works for now and so you can see we've got all of our golden potatoes We've got our red potatoes and even more red potatoes in here. I don't know how those golden ones got over there, but we did pretty well on our potato harvest. There's some really big ones in there, obviously some smaller ones, but, and all we do is put them in boxes and then we cover them with blankets to keep any light off of them. And that seems to work for us. We also blanched and froze our carrots this year. Uh, it was the best way for us to preserve them, but they turned out pretty good. And you can see we've got a lot of our cauliflower in our freezer, and we even were able to harvest some blackberries, some wild blackberries, and we froze those. We'll turn these into jam, I'm sure. But that's mostly what we preserved this year. It's not a whole lot. I know there's more exceptional videos on YouTube of things that they've preserved, but this is us kind of documenting what we were able to do this year, which was a lot better than last year. And that's really all we can ask for is just improving year after year and getting better and, you know, gaining more knowledge of how to preserve these foods and, and you know, have better yields and whatever it is. But all I can ask is that we improve each year. And we still have some things that we're gonna have to harvest and preserve. We still have a lot more tomatoes and a lot more sauces to make in the garden, which we'll probably end up doing later in the year and just freezing them for now. But we still have our meat chickens that we're growing and they won't be ready until we get back from Costa Rica. And so we'll, we'll go ahead and butcher them when we get back. And our meat birds this year, we're raising some Rud Rangers. We're not doing the Cornish Cross anymore. They're over here in these chicken tractors. And you can see they're getting pretty close. They're pretty darn good size, I believe. Right now they're about 10 weeks old. So we were probably about, you know, three to four weeks out from butchering them, which is perfect timing for us because that's when we get back from Costa Rica. But they look pretty darn good. We've had past videos where I talked about the difference between like a Cornish Cross and like a Rud Ranger like we have here in our uh, chicken tractors and the reason why we like to do the Rudd Ranger now is because we had a pretty poor experience with Cornish Cross They did not turn out the way we wanted them to and 
So we tried the Rudd Rangers, which take a little bit longer to grow out, and we've just loved growing those because they, they're so much hardier. We can just leave their feed out for them. We don't need to make sure they don't, you know, eat too much and have a heart attack like you do with the Cornish Cross. And we've, we've just really enjoyed it. They're a lot easier to butcher, in my opinion, and they taste a lot better. The skin is a little thicker, I will say that. That is one of the downsides. Um, but you know, chickens are supposed to have some decently thick skin. They're not supposed to have really, really thin skin like you're used to from the grocery store. Uh, even though we're all used to it, it isn't normal for chickens. That's because those chickens are really, really overly bred. So, um, you know, we're willing to sacrifice, you know, a thicker skin for uh, better tasting meat. So, uh, I, I'm really happy with these. If, if you do Cornish Cross and you want to raise something a little different, Red Rangers are great. You can get all different kinds. They're they're basically like the red version of a Cornish cross that's much hardier and every hatchery has its own version of it like a Red Ranger or a Red Ranger, all, all different kinds. They all call them the, a different thing but they're basically the same. Like I said, our chickens have been laying like crazy and all of our younger ones that we raised up earlier in the year are mature now and they are in full swing of, of egg laying season so they're doing really, 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 really well. And they've been going crazy on our compost pile, which we are gonna spread in the garden eventually. And we already have another compost pile right here for them that's gonna be ready when we decide to move them off of this one. So they're doing really well. Our chicken coop is holding up well and they're really enjoying it. It's been pretty good for them, so. I do love all the different colors of chickens we have in there, but. Not all of them are really, really high quality egg layers, so we don't get one egg a day from every single one of them like I wish we would. Look at this sad fruit tree. This thing is so heavy, it's just leaning over. And these don't look the greatest. I don't know what's getting to them, but I think next year I might not let that thing go to fruit and so it can grow a little bit bigger like some of these other trees have. Like I said, the gardens, for the most part done we pretty hands off this time of year because we have landscape fabric so we don't really have to do a whole bunch of weeding but all that's really left growing in there is a few beans uh, some sunflowers our pumpkins and then our tomatoes so those are really hands off and they uh, don't need much attention so i'm not even going to bother showing you that we've made a couple videos recently about our garden so if you want to check out what our garden was like this year you can go check out those videos one thing that we did do this year though, something I've always wanted is a pond. So I dug a little pond in here and thankfully we have clay soils, so it should hold pretty good. We need a couple good rains and maybe it'll fill up. Our cows are doing really well. Each year we're here, our pastures get better and better. So they just obviously enjoy it more and more, but they're doing pretty well. And uh, Buddy had a little case of pink eye, but I think that has subsided now and he's doing a lot better, which is good. And obviously Rosie's calf is looking pretty darn big and he's still getting all the milk he can. Rosie's doing great. We have actually stopped milking Rosie uh, just because we had the wedding and we slowed down on milking and then she dropped in production and then I was going to start milking her again every single day and upping her production but then we were going to leave for two weeks for Costa Rica so I just said you know what I'm going to leave her. She was producing just enough for him so we were having to calf separate every night to get any kind of milk and so I decided eh, I'm just going to leave them and Next year we'll do a little better. Next year we won't be having all these trips and you know all these different gatherings and things like that. They're gonna pull me away from milking her every day or at least you know multiple times a week so that way she doesn't drop in production. So, but she's doing really well and she is obviously bred by Buddy and uh, we should be having a calf here early next year. Sadly, it's probably gonna be in February, but our barn's holding up really, really well, and our pastures are doing super well this year. They're just getting, like I said, better and better every year, and uh, we hope that that trend continues for decades to come. There's a log sitting right there because we have finally, after quite a long time of wanting one, decided to order a sawmill. We have a lot of trees on this property and a lot of them that are down right now that are perfect saw logs, a bunch of white oak. And so we ordered a sawmill, so it should be here 
actually before we leave for Costa Rica, but I probably won't be able to tinker with it until we get back. So that's why that log's sitting there because hopefully that's gonna turn into some live edge pieces or you know maybe some rough cut lumber. Hey busy. Hey dear busy. Our pig farm has changed a little bit and I'll show you how how that's changed but Bezzy is obviously still here and she's doing really well. She is currently pregnant so we have her in this little farrowing pen out here in kind of our woods area and uh, she is getting pretty close. I think she's maybe two or three weeks away from farrowing so she'll probably farrow while we're gone and my mom's watching the farm while we're gone so she's probably going to be able to see piglets born for the first time so that should be exciting for her but uh Bessie's doing great and she's got a nice little pen there for her and all of her piglets and they should be obviously nice and warm it's summertime so they won't have any issues with that but they'll be nice and happy and then over here in our forest area which we have had pigs here before it's kind of a thick area with a bunch of uh locust trees that are really beautiful and we've got our pigs in here so we have actually this year gotten rid of some of our pigs. Uh, you know, one of our pigs didn't end up being who we thought it would be, so she ended up going to the butcher. But uh, we still got Penelope here. Penelope's doing great. We are actually giving her a break right now, so she is in a pen all by herself. She is not getting bread this time of year, and she's going to enjoy her relaxation away from Mike and who we still have we still have mike over here but we have gotten rid of uh samson and delilah we ended up selling them to somebody else so they're living nice and happy lives but just on another farm and mike over here is obviously living life as well you do mike you do mike he's doing really good in his pen over here and enjoying the forest these pigs although they're a pasture pig they really do love the forest it's nice and cool for them this time of year and and we we enjoy having them in the forest a little bit more because they just they make their little wallows and they stay nice and cool but one other change that we've kind of started to make and we aren't too sure if it's going to stick we're just kind of testing things is we have this pig right here which this little guy is actually a Tamworth pig who has a lot of personality, which is really fun, but he is a feeder pig and he is actually five months old. He is pretty big. And one thing we're trying to see is, is do we really, really enjoy the pasture pigs because they're great, great pigs, but they do take a little longer to grow out. And not to say we're gonna get rid of Idaho pasture pigs by any means, I'm sure we're gonna keep raising them, but do we want to, you know, maybe venture into some Tamworth pigs, which are uh, a very old breed, but they do uh, grow a little bit quicker. They'll be butcher weight, you know, usually about six months. And um, so far, so good. I really enjoy this pig. I love the personality. Um, I, I've really enjoyed the growth rate. Uh, they obviously don't eat grass like Idaho pasture pigs do, but they, uh, you know, they're used for different things. So, this is what they consider, they consider this the bacon pig because it's so long, it has such a long belly that you can get a lot of bacon out of it. So I'm pretty excited. I'm excited to see, and I, I and like I said, I have enjoyed raising this uh, Tamworth pig up. So um, this is actually a Tamworth Berkshire, but um, you know, mostly it's a Tamworth, I think. So I'm pretty excited to uh, see how he turns out how he tastes. But that's kind of our new pig operation. We've reduced our pigs, pig herd quite a bit and uh, mostly because we've been so busy this year. But also, you know, we're, we, we've enjoyed raising and selling Idaho pasture pigs for breed stock, but um, eventually we would love to, you know, start raising some pigs for meat and, you know, selling to, you know, uh, people around us and you know Lexington and things like that so but that you know that's a pipe dream for right now that's not uh, 
in the works, but we're kind of doing some tests for ourselves to see if we like different kinds of meat rather than the Idaho pasture pig. So busy here, should have some piglets soon which I'm sure you'll see when we get back from Costa Rica. Well, Ashlyn and I are really happy with all that we've been able to accomplish this year alongside all of the busyness we've had. To be able to put away food like that and store potatoes and, and tomato sauces and corn and like all these things that we eat every single week is really huge for us. And our, and our grocery bill has reduced quite a bit as I'm sure you can imagine. And I would say the biggest savings is the meat. That's very expensive, especially if you're looking for like organic meats. Uh, it's incredibly expensive. And so it's been really, really nice to not have to buy that. And honestly, we're probably never gonna have to buy meat from the grocery store again, as long as our freezers don't turn off. But uh, we do have a generator just in case. Well, I know this was a bit of a quick video and we haven't been too consistent on the videos lately, but I'm sure that when we get back from Costa Rica, we'll be able to be a little bit more consistent than we have been just because we won't be nearly as busy. Um, we're still gonna be working on our rental and stuff, but uh, we won't have all of this time off away from the farm that we've had this year. So um, yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm curious to hear what you guys have preserved and um, you know, leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys have been able to put away this year, even if it's, even if it's something super small, like you froze some veggies or something. I mean, that's that's a big step, and uh, any step is is a big step in the right direction. So, well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you in the next one.